Hello citizens, today I thought I would do something different. I thought I would read to you from a book, Judge Dredd, Year One, Omnibus. The authors are Michael Carroll, Al Ewing and Matt Smith. The first book in this omnibus is City Fathers by Matthew Smith. And it starts now. Chapter 1. I think we can rule out suicide. How so? You're standing on his pancreas. Dread glanced down at his feet, at the sticky brown-red smear beneath his boot. He grunted an apology and stepped back, closer to the door. Part of the organ came with him, leaving a thin trail across the carpet. He felt awkward and impatient, at a crime scene surplus to requirements, perhaps. After the initial adrenaline rush of discovering the body, there was little he could do but wait for the med and tech teams to finish their work, and he was finding it difficult knowing where to place himself. He slid to one side as a pair of auxiliaries squeezed through with a stretcher. It was doubly hard with the room sprayed as it was with viscera. There seemingly wasn't a surface out or item of furniture that hadn't been splattered by the contents of the victim's gut, his torso sliced open from gullet to navel. He was sitting back in his chair by the window, waxy and stiff like a hollowed out anatomist's model, the gore fanning around him. It had dried dark and textured on the walls and ceiling, seeped into the floor, the stench was ripe. He couldn't have ingested a micro-explosive, Dredd asked watching as McCready trod delicately around the corpse, shining a torch into his face and stomach cavity, poking matter with the end of his pen. Unlikely, I know, but I've heard of it being used for many means to an end. No, McCready replied, shaking his head as he continued his inspection. No scorch marks, no residue to deduce that. He wasn't blown open from the inside, he was stabbed, repeatedly. The gut suggested a blade weapon, kind of a frenzy killing. To have caused these kinds of wounds and this amount of trauma, he straightened up. I'd say you were looking at either a maniac or a creep making a point. And then, he added, nodding at the far wall, there's that. Dread followed his gaze to the symbol painted in blood as it had been slapped on hurriedly with little finesse. And much had dribbled down onto the sofa beneath it and so its intended design was not easy to discern. The letters ICU had been verbally added underneath. A gang tad? McCready offered. Intensive care unit? Dread, dread murmured. Local punks, morons for the most part, spent much of their time fighting amongst themselves. Something like this seems out of character, but that didn't discount the possibility that this was a revenge slaying for some slight or betrayal, he had to admit. It had the ritualistic air of gang snuff, the gruesome showiness of a warning to others. He'd get units to round the ICU up, see what they had to say within the unforgiven walls and the interrogation cube. Only problem was, the Vic had no history of ever running or dealing with one of the many street gangs that operated in this sector. That, with the fact that at the time of his death was working for Justice Department. I see you... McCready intoned, could that be relevant, given the Vic's occupation? He grunted a thought, maybe. He had caught the call a couple of hours earlier. Whilst on routine patrol, neighbours at Robert Shaw Block had been making complaints about the smell emanating from one of the apartments. Eliciting no response, the judge had overridden the lock and entered, discovering the source of the problem stumped in a chair beside a large picture window and a powerful telescope. He must have been dead for at least three days. Control identified as Jacob Crooms, a 23-year-old with pleading a peeping bust stretching back to his juve days. He had serious voyeurism issues and even sought out counselling after his first month in the cubes. He was a persistent offender totalling over 20 counts and the past six years the arresting officer had widely decided enough was enough and offered him an ultimatum. Utilise your talents as a posit in a positive fashion and peep for the city, or enjoy a spell on a psych ward. Croons had unsurprisingly opted for the former, so he was set up as a Justice Central sanctioned peeper, one of the judge's many eyes in Metropolis. A linked network and spies, 
reporting all suspicious activity and criminal movements to their masters. It was an arrangement that had brought decent results. Peepers were nothing if not diligent, and according to his record, Croons had a higher than average hit rate. He was a man who clearly loved his work, passionately, some might say, integral to the job, but also a peeper's own safety was secrecy. He wouldn't have instructed to tell no one what he did, and to keep all monitoring of suspects utterly discreet. Looking around the deceased's apartment, Dredd surmised that Croons had a little trouble with that side of things and had basically been a shut-in. His kitchen cupboard stocked with multiple tins, foodstuff, and single sets of plates and cutlery, the minimal clothing, all painted the picture of a man who entertained alone, and he'd lived f what he'd lived for was his obsession, to watch and record, to catch sight of the forbidden, and his home was austere and functional elsewhere, everywhere else. His viewing equipment was state-of-the-art and spotlessly maintained. The huge digital telescope dominated the living space connected to a humming, blinking black monolith of a computer. Everyone he'd seen, everyone he'd passed under his gaze was captured, filled and stored in the crew's beloved machinery. I'm going to leave it there now. It's page 12 of the book I've just got to. There's another five pages of the, this chapter, but I don't want to give you too much for this first video. Enjoy, and good night. Hello citizens, today I've